have ever been a student, you have taken an examination to assess your learning. While examinations are constant in the educational experience, how the examination is administered has changed over time. There are two types of examinations used in higher education today, standardized testing and course-specific testing. Standardized testing, such as the GRE, SAT, or ACT, are measures of knowledge used across settings. These tests compare the test taker to others taking the same test. These examinations are usually developed by a panel of experts and provide a psychometrically established measure that is predictive of a specific outcome. On the other hand, course-specific examinations are developed by the course instructor for the assessment of individual achievement of specific course objectives. Course-specific examinations are the focus of the remainder of this presentation. Assessment of course-specific objectives has progressed over time. In the past, learning assessments were individualized as the student endured Socratic questioning by the professor or the apprentice learner demonstrated their knowledge to their mentor. Next was the written test, group testing in the classroom with students writing in a blue book to be read and evaluated by the professor. The existence of optical scanners culminated in the use of Scantron sheets for students to record answers, which are then read by the machine, which generates the grade. Scantron forms and the associated number two pencils became common for test administration in the late 1970s. The widespread use of Scantron sheets made forced choice items such as multiple choice and true-false tests, a popular mode of learning assessment. But today, we will find the Scantron sheet at the bottom of the supply closet. Computer-based tests are the emerging means of learning assessment. They are individualized, secure, and make immediate feedback possible. But first, let's look at how the Scantron became so popular and why it has now become obsolete. McLuhan proposed the Tetrad as a mean for discussing the effect of technology on society. The four quadrants examine what is enhanced, obsolete, retrieved, and reversed. Here is a Tetrad for the Scantron sheet. As you can see, it enhances math testing and the development of data files while making the use of red pens, student handwriting, and subjective assessments obsolete. Use of Scantron sheets for testing retrieve test banks and the idea of standardization while reversing the focus on thinking and in-depth analysis of students' knowing. In addition, Thornburg describes six forces that drive the use of technology. A review of these forces helps us to understand the popularity of the Scantron form. The popular Scantron form evolved from the optical scanners, lead-based number two pencils, and the blue book. The synergy of these earlier technologies made machine grading of examinations a reality. The next evolution was a machine that could also give the examination. The popularity of the Scantron form was a disruptive force in higher education as professors moved to objective forced choice testing to take advantage of this new technology. The recognition that graduates lacked critical thinking skills was the disruption that doomed the Scantron to its lowly place in the supply closet. The force of science fiction predicting the use of Scantron forms is clearly evident. Science fiction has long showed machines overtaking human functions, such as evaluation of knowledge. The emergence of mass testing and machine grading of a large number of tests is reminiscent of the Industrial Revolution concepts of mechanization and mass production. Therefore, the rhyme of history force is evident. A generation that was focused on individual needs contributed to the demise of the mass testing experience. The force of increasing returns with the Scantron form is interesting. The acceptance of the Scantron was not solely related to technological or pedagogical considerations, but to convenience and ease of grading for the educator. Increasing returns does not really explain the demise of the Scantron. In fact, many educators anticipated that computer-based testing 
was going to further increase convenience. Finally, the Red Queen, or the emergence of a dominant technology among competitors. While a number of optical scanning machines were available from the mid-1900s, Scantron Incorporated emerged and captured the educational marketplace. Over time, the continued increase in the power and availability of personal computers resulted in a more interactive experience and the emergence of a new queen, which became the dominant technology. But today, the Scantron form is just a memory on many college campuses. It has been replaced by computer-based testing. According to the Office of the Department of Education, computer-based testing is a test taken by a student on a computer and scored by the computer. Here is the tetrad for computer-based testing as an emerging technology. It enhances the trackability of testing behaviors, thus making traditional paper and pencil testing obsolete. It makes testing centers and virtual proctors needed and retrieves the idea of collaboration and demonstrating evidence of knowledge. And again, we can see how Thornburg's forces explain the emergence of this technology. The evolutionary force is the progression of existing technologies to a new one. The Scantron form used a machine to grade the learner's responses. The evolution of computer-based testing progresses to a machine that administers the examination as well. Computer-based exams bring back an individualized approach to examination, similar to the Socratic approach and our evidence of the rhyme of history force. While incorporating elements of the past, computer-based testing also makes a reality of the futuristic scenario seen in television, movies, and literature. For example, in the television series The Jetsons, Elroy frequently interacted with a computer in his educational pursuits. Computer-based testing is a disruptive force in the higher education setting. Concerns about student cheating and dishonesty have caused educators to rethink the use of high-stakes testing and to replace the long midterm and final examinations with more frequent and shorter exams and the use of examinations that require higher level cognitive thinking. The reemergence of essay and problem-based assessments is also evidence of the rhymes of history. The last two forces, increasing returns and red queens, are factors in computer-based testing in terms of its implementation. Increasing returns may become evident in the area of proctoring. Will computer-based testing be conducted in a centralized testing center with virtual proctors or with some yet-to-be-experienced technology to protect academic integrity? Similarly, the Red Queen force is not yet clearly defined. Will computer-based testing occur within commercial learning management systems, for-profit private software, or open source offerings? These are questions yet to be defined. To enhance our understanding of this emerging technology, a small phenomenological study was done. The goal of this phenomenological research was to develop an understanding of the perspective of university faculty who use testing for the assessment of student knowledge. Phenomenology is concerned with the study of experiences from the perspective of the individual. Using purposeful sampling, a key group of decision makers and end users were invited to participate in a structured interview with grand tour style questions and follow up probes. Participants in this research included the interim assistant provost for e-learning, a program director, and three faculty members. Participants had significant experience in higher education and represented a variety of disciplines. Following each interview, the transcript was read and reread to get a feeling of what was being said. A mind map was created to detail participants' responses to each grantor's question. The data reduction process is illustrated in the mind maps associated with both the obsolete and emerging technology. In the mind maps, the thickness of the line correlates with the number of respondents giving a similar reply. The interview started by asking the participants to share their philosophy about assessment of student learning and how they assess learning. All participants taught both undergraduate and graduate students in both the face-to-face -face and online environment. 
participants used a variety of assessment technologies with some differences based on their perception of purpose of the assessment in undergraduate and graduate education. The use of objective assessment measures were more commonly used in undergraduate courses. Participants' expression of the meaning of assessment included, assessment is the manner by which students show what they have learned. It cuts across all levels of classes and methods of course delivery. And another participant shared, Technology, either the Scantron, student clickers, or computer-administered tests, has put more focus on the test as the primary form of assessment. But we can't forget that other forms are also available to the educator. The second focus of the data collection interview was on the use of Scantron forms for student testing. While all participants had used Scantron forms, they identified a number of negative features related to individual user and systematic limitations. Participants also identified that the decision to use the Scantron form was often related to convenience or departmental policy and not sound assessment practices. Only one participant continues to use the Scantron form for examinations, but this is related to course-specific needs and individual faculty comfort level. One participant nicely summarized the impact of the Scantron. The time saved and the quickness of getting grades posted for the students really changed my outlook on giving tests. I used to give short tests, but with the Scantron, I started giving longer tests. At the time, I thought this was good for the students, but as I look back, I realized I was only testing the recall of facts and dates, not real knowledge. All participants currently use computer-based testing in both face-to-face -face and online courses. All participants mention concerns about user abuse and cheating and the use of proctoring. However, there was no clear consensus about if proctoring is essential or the best way to prevent cheating in computer-based te testing. A new category of advantages, which included items such as student feedback, collaborative learning, and random item selection, emerged from these data. This category was not evident in the data related to the Scantron form. All participants discussed cheating and faculty involvement with computer-based testing. For example, specific to cheating, one participant said, I use standard controls like the lockdown browser, test randomization, and timed exams with one access point, and I just accept the fact that some students are still going to find a way to cheat. I assume that a computer-based test is an open book test. The rationale for online testing and the impact was summarized by another participant who said, I use online testing because it is convenient for my students. I think online testing puts the faculty member back into the loop. Good online testing does take more faculty time, not only to enter the item, but to construct item banks and to program the test itself but the data you get about your students is worth the effort. Four participants stated a clear preference for computer-based testing. As one participant shared, the flexibility and ease of grading and archiving, as well as the opportunity to give direct feedback to the students, are all advantages. The preference for computer-based testing was related to practical issues such as saving of time and money by not making paper copies of the exam and storage of examinations, as well as to pedagogical issues such as using more constructivist approaches and focusing on knowledge development and not just recall and recognition. Participants were less clear about students' preferences. Most expressed that students liked the convenience of computer-based testing, but identified that students really didn't have a choice. The concerns that students have shared about computer-based testing related to technical problems and concerns about the fairness of a test when items are randomly selected for each student. One participant said it nicely. Almost all the courses in our college use computer testing, so they really don't have a choice. Some students voice concern about the fact that students get different questions, and of course the weaker students are certain they got all the hard questions. But if the test banks are well constructed, it is easy to demonstrate the equality of the test. Overall, these participants did not see these concerns as barriers to the use of computer-based testing. 
In conclusion, this study found that the adoption of computer-based testing was grounded in the participants' individual experience, comfort with technology, and support within the work environment. All participants acknowledged that computer-based testing broadens the options for learning assessment and transforms the role of the educator. The implications for the future are that educators need support and education in creating new assessment activities and using the attributes of computer-based testing. In addition, the paradigm of higher education needs to shift to value the role of faculty as an interactive participant in the process of learning assessment. The widespread adoption of computer-based testing will be based on educators, students, and consumers of the outcomes being confident in the psychometric property of, of these assessments. In addition, the widespread concerns about the test taker's identity and concerns about cheating need to be satisfactorily addressed. Potential remedies may include biometric logon procedures to confirm identity, virtual and centralized proctoring may be used, or maybe using holographic technology, the student will be transported to the professor's office to engage in the testing procedure. Today, testing extends beyond the student experience. Licensure, certification, and credentialing procedures for a variety of professional roles includes testing. So stay tuned. The next technologic innovations may impact you.